Stop! Did you know that nearly 50% of people watching this video are not subscribed to the channel? Chances are, that's you. What's wrong with you? Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon right now for instant notification of uploads and live streams housed on this channel. When you think of horror games, you wouldn't normally look towards Nintendo. And to be fair, calling Luigi's Mansion a horror game is like calling Call of Duty an adaptation of Schindler's List. Oh, Christ. But you can't deny that it is pretty damn spooky, at least from a Halloween-y aesthetic point of view. <laughs> but I mean, come on, it's Reddit E for everyone, it can't be that scary. Oh my god! <laughs> Luigi's Mansion was a launch title for the Nintendo GameCube, a console plagued by issues endemic to much of Nintendo's technology. In spite of it housing some of the most iconic and fun-to-play games of its respective generation, the GameCube itself received some mixed reception upon its launch. For a reason, I call it the Nintendo shit cube because it's a piece of fucking shit! Ah! With one of the more interesting criticisms being that it didn't launch with a Mario game, the world wouldn't receive Mario Sunshine until the following year, 2002. People were more than ready to discount Luigi's Mansion on the basis that it wasn't a Mario game. But not me. Now, this might have been because I first played it when I was like three years old, but this isn't nostalgia talking. Luigi's Mansion is genuinely one of my favorite games of all time, as well as one of my first. You play as Luigi. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. And Luigi has won a mansion in a contest he did not enter. There's only one problem. When he enters the house, it's completely dark. There's some weird spikes covering the front door in the foyer, and Mario is nowhere to be seen. He was supposed to meet Luigi here after he heard his brother had won a mansion. And then, as soon as he discovers a key that gives him access to the upstairs... <laughs> Ghosts. Luigi's mansion is haunted. Oh man, not my house! Luckily, he is encountered by the tutorial character, Professor E. Ged, not long after. The good professor exclusively speaks in absolute gibberish. It's any wonder how Luigi has a single iota of a clue what the hell he's saying. Regardless, Mr. Gad reiterates that the house is full of ghosts, hands Luigi a fucking vacuum cleaner, and tasks him with systematically clearing out each section of the mansion, room to room, like he's in Stalingrad. All with the hopes of eventually rescuing. Mario. If you guys were expecting any further level of complexity in the story, it, it, it's a Luigi game, guys. It, it's not amnesia. <laughs> I do not exist. I am the ghost. The game then bombards you with an obligatory tutorial section showing you how to vacuum up your room, something I'm sure many gamers need a re-up on. But it is here where we are presented with the basic gameplay loop. Ghosts ambush you, you stun them by toggling your flashlight at them, then you suck them up. Bonus points if you manage to get a couple of them at the same time. Isn't this incredibly basic? Yes. Does this sound incredibly easy? Yes, but shut up. Belying its sparse mechanics and very simplistic setup, the combat in Luigi's Mansion is at first, yes, a bit easy and not very involved, but as the game progresses you are introduced to more and more varieties of enemies that try to spice up the gameplay the more you progress. Like you have your basic bitch orange goobers whose special attack is punching. These green guys who do nothing but litter banana peels everywhere. And how could I forget? The Snuggle Struggle Ghosts. Although the difficulty does progress slightly with each stage, the game is still really not that hard whatsoever. It doesn't take until you unlock the hidden mansion where the game finally feels like it's taking adequate advantage of its enemy pool. But we'll get to that part of the game later. The first zone of the game, where Luigi first breaches the front entrance of the mansion, is essentially an extended tutorial, showcasing the gameplay in its absolute most bare-bones form. Few rooms, basic enemies, and the more elaborate mechanics have yet to appear, although there are toads fucking everywhere littered all throughout the mansion, presumably as part of some botched rescue operation. So while Luigi is playing housemaid, the <laughs> team of toads are out here playing fucking Resident Evil. These guys act as save points for your adventure. Please, please, please! You have to help me find Mario! If he doesn't get back, you have no idea how upset the princess will be! She'll flap! I don't know you, and I don't care to know you. First thing a game teaches you is that the ghosts leave absolute heaps of cash lying everywhere around the mansion. Oh, and there are booby traps everywhere as well. These are some pretty advanced security systems. Imagine how much safer the world would be if burglars got pasted against the wall by a trapped door every time they hit someone's house. You might call this guerrilla warfare on the part of the ghosts. I call it home alone warfare. Oh, oh! 
Back to the cash, like in any other Mario game, picking up coins and fat stacks of Benjis do nothing other than contribute to your high score at the end of each stage, and the game itself. This does, however, mean that canonically, Luigi is now the richest man in the Mushroom Kingdom, and all he had to do was walk onto someone's property and harass its inhabitants with a vacuum cleaner. Take that, Wario. You had, like, one good platformer and you literally go homeless in that game. Outside of coins and cash, the game also contains jump scares. <laughs> Blue versions of the orange ghosts who whiz all over the rooms they're found in like coked up squirrels. They can be a real pain to catch if you don't catch them early, but if you do, they explode into a confetti of his majesty's finest pound sterlings. As well as coloured gems. These gems and diamonds are hidden throughout the game as rewards for finding a secret, humping every bit of furniture within reach, or by completing certain tasks. But they aren't necessary for beating the game. This isn't one of those games where you have to find every single coloured gem just to get the good ending. It's not that autistic. Oh, and kids, I don't know if your mummy or daddy taught you this, but please don't hoover up random bits of change or notes you see on the floor. The economy these days is bad enough, and you don't want to be responsible for forcing your family to shop at Lidl's instead of Tesco's now, do you? The stats for the cash and treasure you've picked up show up on your Game Boy Horror, a Game Boy that has been retrofitted into an archaic prototype smartphone. Like, seriously, this thing gives you maps, allows for video calls, and allows you to take photographs and examine items more closer. <laughs> Aside from giving you a fully panoramic view of the room you're in, free from the fixed camera angles following you throughout much of the game, the camera function allows you to teleport back to the foyer whenever you take a picture of a mirror from anywhere in the mansion. An incredibly useful feature in the latter stages of the game, where you've progressed up to the third and second floors respectively. Granted, it only ever sends you back to the foyer so you can't fast travel everywhere, but it's invaluable if you needed an emergency escape or some breathing room to fall back to and regroup in. Navigating the mansion is really not that hard either since each stage is more or less segregated to its own section of the house without requiring too much backtracking or aimless wandering. It's like Resident Evil without so much of the where the actual fuck am I going. But speaking of the Game Boy, you might have noticed something about it. That weird little flashing and beeping in the top left corner of the device. It only shows up whenever you've already cleared the room and the lights have been switched on. Following it leads you to a random bit of furniture in the room. Interacting with said furniture. <laughs> The boos are a special kind of enemy that appear throughout Luigi's Mansion, introduced in the first half of Zone 2, where you accidentally unleash them after Luigi discovers a bright red button on the wall with bold bloody text beneath it explicitly stating, do not press. So what does Luigi do? <laughs> There are 50 boos in total, technically, we'll, we'll get to that later. And mercilessly hunting them down, destroying every piece of furniture in sight, and checking beneath every floorboard of every room is essential for progressing through the game, since you need a minimum of 40 boos to confront the final boss. Unlike regular ghosts, you can't lock onto them with your vacuum, so you actually have to aim and position yourself accordingly to whittle down their health before they decide to bugger off to the next room over and- Are you motherf- Also, all of these guys are named and exclusively introduced themselves in really bad puns. They might seem like an absolute meme at first, but once you reach the final section of the mansion, namely the basement and the cellar areas, they have such a disgusting amount of health, it is a garren fucking tea, that they'll just morph through the fucking wall and sneak off to another room which you won't be able to access for another half hour every single time. There are more boos hiding in some of these rooms than VC in the trees. Uh, speaking of Vietnam, Luigi can use an actual honest-to-god flamethrower in this game, and actual real butane powered flamethrower like this is rated E for everyone. Luigi's vacuum isn't able to do much in the beginning other than you know suck up ghosts but what if I told you that with further exploration of the mansion you unlock the ability to use it as a flamethrower. <laughs> A fire hydrant. That's my own piss for Christ's sake. Or a freeze gun. You unlock the powers of fire, air, earth, and water through the use of medallions. Fire, water, and ice, respectively. Yes, you can burn ghosts to death with fire. Don't ask me how this works. So does water, as a matter of fact. Given that most of these ghosts can be easily dispatched with a Henry Hoover, it's not that much of a surprise that even the slightest breeze can even do them in. I don't know why Egad just didn't give Luigi a gun and cut out the middleman. On occasion, you'll even come across ghosts who harness specific elements and have to be dispatched using the opposite of that element. And by opposite, I mean like fire on ice or water on fire. And by on occasion, I mean like literally two or three times. It's more so for Luigi to be able to manipulate his environment easier, like lighting candles, watering plants, and harassing women in the shower. 
as well as the occasional environmental puzzle. It's an interesting concept that I'm afraid is nowhere near utilized properly or even as much as it should have been. There's so much potential for this mechanic that could have been used further, but we may never know since its presence in Luigi's Mansion is quite literally the textbook dictionary definition of bare minimum. Also, using the flamethrower doesn't immediately burn the entire house down and kill everyone and everything in it. Then again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Luigi's Mansion is short enough as it is. It only took me a single three hour session to complete the game and compile all this footage, which is only another reason to appreciate the hidden mansion. Some context on the hidden mansion. It's a second difficulty unlocked after completing the game, and although it's available in both the US and European versions, both versions differ vastly from the other. In the US version, ghosts have half health, and Luigi has half health. That's it. There are no other differences in the American hidden mansion other than it's easier to capture ghosts and easier to die. The European version, on the other hand, the mansion is mirrored, the layout of the entire game has been reversed, and it's incredibly disorienting, but it's more than enough to make every location feel unique again. The mansion is way darker than before, and the enemy placement has been altered completely, with late game enemies appearing way earlier in combination with some other more mechanically complex enemies. And yeah, it's way harder. Walking into some rooms in the hidden mansion feel like an honest to god ambush has just hit you, and you really have to fight to survive in these situations. It's great. It breathes new life into the base game and extends the total playtime to a total potential of six hours if not more. Why was this not offered to the Americans? Because the Japanese, like us Europeans, know that the Americans suck at video games, and that any attempt at offering them a challenge will be met with harsher resistance than at the Argonne Forest. One thing I will say though, the boo spawns seem randomized in the hidden mansion. What do I mean by this? Well, in the first room where a boo spawns, it had 150 health points, where he then proceeded to showcase me his doubled speed and aggression and fucked off out the room, only for me to follow him, attack him again, only for him to do the exact same thing all over again. Then I go to the next room, 60 health. It might seem like I've been avoiding a significant aspect of Luigi's Mansion and its enemy roster. And I have gallery ghosts. Professor E. Gad has a gallery dug beneath his super secret ghost studying lab. It is here where he stores and displays, for one sick perversion or another, the more powerful ghosts he has captured as if they were trophies. <laughs> At least, he would if they hadn't escaped when the booze attacked also. You have the opportunity to visit the gallery after the tutorial, where Egad proudly presents to you his carefully curated collection of absolutely fuck all. Just blank canvas. This is the equivalent of inviting your girl to your place after you had all your furniture burgled. And so he leaves it to you to locate and capture all of them. But these ghosts are not like the others. These ghosts have distinctive personalities, appearances, and hobbies, all of which are tied to the rooms they're in and the daily activities they partake in. You can't just hold them at torch point though, because these ghosts have standards. Neville, the bookish father as he's described, can naturally be found in his personal library reading a book. Dealing with him is as simple as waiting for him to yawn from reading the first page of Twilight and then striking. Other ghosts are slightly more complex and require paying some attention to their behaviours or their environment. With Lydia, you have to open the window to cause a draft. With Mr. Lugs, you have to nick all his food because he's fat. And with Biff Atlas, the bodybuilder, you have to beat the shit out of him. Fun fact about Biff, his codex entry states, this kind bodybuilder loves muscles and lilies. Why lilies? Because they symbolize purity. Actually, this kind bodybuilder? Most of these ghosts are just hanging out minding their own business. Only a select few of them actually antagonize and attempt to harm Luigi. But the vast majority of them seem more than content just sitting around, practicing doing what they love in death as they did in life. Maybe Luigi is the invader here. Oh yeah, and this game is a codex as well. Cataloging all the ghosts you've captured in their various ages and personality. C can ghosts even age? I mean, yeah, there are a couple of ghost children here as well, which is pretty dark, but at least Chauncey is stated to have been born as a ghost. The twins, on the other hand, yeah. And as far as boss fights go, they're all right, I guess. There's like four, and if there's one thing I can give them props for is that they are rather memorable. The first one, Chauncey, not so much because you're just fighting your average Fortnite player. What the fuck you say to me, you little shit? Half the time you don't even need to move at all because Chauncey really sucks at projectile attacks because he's a child. Oh, and there's Bogmire.
actual nightmare fuel when I was a three-year-old. Boo losses is less challenging and more just annoying. You have to G-mod fizz gun his ass against a unicorn horn to pop him and split him up into a dozen smaller boos that fly everywhere and taunt you if you start to get anywhere near them. At least his boss music is quite cool. Oh. Yeah, this is a Nintendo game. Nintendo are notorious for being unreasonably heavy-handed with their IPs and the materials they're in. Even if the contents of this review are nothing but gushing praise for one of their finest games that they've ever created, which is over 20 years old, mind you, I'm sure they've already got a sniper planted on a roof on the opposite end of town from me, waiting for the word go. Which is why I'm going to put this here right now. Not that it'll save me because Nintendo is a Japanese company, but YouTube is an American platform, so I guess you could consider this video my formal announcement that I am now under the protective custody of the United States government. God bless the USA, and God bless the CIA. Uh, anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about the soundtrack. This song is one you'll hear wandering the mansion in the dark. It's orchestral and brooding, perfect for the mysterious atmosphere contained within. And this soundtrack is actually dynamic. You can hear Luigi humming the tune quite cheerfully when exploring the lit areas of the mansion. Hmm. While nervously humming the same tune in the darker, quieter sections of the building. Hmm. There's a couple of themes that have absolutely no reason to bop as hard as they do, but alas, we have the Game Boy Horror theme. And Professor E. Gad's theme as well. Both of which convey a light-hearted interjection to an otherwise fairly brooding experience. It's fascinating how well Luigi's Mansion straddles the line of being super creepy and being wholesome, goofy fun. With this line only ever being crossed once you enter certain rooms and the music just abruptly stops. <laughs> And back to the bosses, the boss themes end up doing most of the work for the bosses themselves in establishing a frenetic pace and tension that is otherwise lacking from these pretty easy set pieces. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion is one of my favorite games of all time. It might not be one of the most complex, it might not be the longest, it might not even be one of the greatest of all time, but my relationship with this game and the countless autistic hours I spent on it during my childhood have left more than just a meager impression on me and my adult years and my subsequent taste in games. Nintendo might not be the benevolent architects of childhood memories that we once knew, but their former works and our memories and experiences therein will stick with us for as long as we are alive. Thank you all for watching. This is my first video returning from my winter to break and it's great to be back. Like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you like the video. I live stream every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays at 7pm British time. Br British time, y yeah alright. I'd appreciate it if you dropped in and checked it out, it's a lot of fun. We'll drive. Forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, forward. <laughs> oh dear. Right, forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, <laughs> fast, right, 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 fast, right, fast, <laughs> left. Right, fast, right, fast, 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 right, fast, right, left, fast, fast, left, 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 fast, right, fast. Social media links in the description. And of course, I have a Patreon where I upload behind the scenes blogs and videos, as well as organize movie night with the boys on Fridays with the Gentleman's Club. Check it out. Regardless, thank you all for watching. And please, have a great day.